having a son with cancer is actually one of the most numbing things uh, that I've ever felt. We have been a close family and uh, uh, having a son that you want to have a life and have a, um, a future and suddenly being hit by the thought that that might not happen is very difficult because you want the best for them, you want them to um, uh, get married and do all the things that everybody else does so it's hard to think of a future without that happening. There are so many emotions and so many things that go through your head. Uh, how long have we got? Can they cure it? Um, what's it going to be like? How much is he going to suffer? All those things just made my mind really um, close in and go, I can't even take this in. I think as a family it's had a big impact on us. It's made us evaluate life, what's important in life, uh, what you can just take for granted um, and really just to think about the purpose of life. Uh, I think it's very um, important that you make a difference every day if you can. So many people are materialistic and think, oh, I must get the next thing or whatever. But when something like this hits you, I think it's clear that uh, those things aren't really important. It's about um, living your life and having good relationships and uh, uh, being part of a family that is loving and caring no matter what you go through. I'd say we're a close family, don't, don't always get on, uh, but that's the same for every family. But I think we are a close family, we talk about everything, we've not um, ever hidden the fact that Dan's got cancer, uh, we're open about where things are at and we discuss it as a family. Well, the impact of Daniel having the cancer on the family has been enormous. Um, I think we were all numbed by it, as I've probably said before, um, and then the realisation comes that, you know, as a family we've got to pull together, we've got to be there for Daniel and really help and support him through this and I think we've tried to do that in every way that we can. The way I feel is every day where Dan's fit enough to do this vlog or come and visit us or we can see him and have time together and maybe snatch a laugh or just a joke together is valuable. Every moment is really valuable. When we heard the council was terminal I think because Dan had done so much research etc we were kind of expecting that although it wasn't really what you wanted to hear um, but I guess none of us know what's around the corner whatever age we are and um, it's just trying to make the most of life uh, while you have it. But the priority is that he gets the best treatment and um, the best care and the best time with the family that we can give him. Matt and Ben cope I think with uh, knowing that Daniel's uh, very ill uh, quite well. I think for Ben it's difficult sometimes to understand all of the ins and outs of what's going on but he understands the big picture. Matt um, has, has got a much deeper understanding of what is happening with Daniel and because he has to travel we all try and um, cope by keeping in touch, keeping everyone informed and uh, trying to make the most of every time that we can speak together. I cope with it through my faith and uh, prayers of others for us as a family and um, the fact that uh, ultimately uh, the decisions are sometimes taken out of our hands. The doctors when they were telling us about the operation how it went with Daniel and they actually said uh, now Daniel is inoperable. Um, I think the reality hit in then that uh, uh, it was terminal and uh, I shed a few tears I must admit it wasn't an easy thing to come to terms with um, but I think once you get over the shock of that you then start to consider right what do we do now um, how do we make it the best for Dan uh, while we can um, so the initial shock is always difficult but then you move on from that uh, and where I'm quite an upbeat person so I'm always looking for positive things and I think that's a good way to be. I know not everybody can be like that, but I like to look at the positives out of everything and bring something good out of what could be a difficult situation.
My initial reaction when I heard that Daniel had terminal cancer was uh, firstly great, really sad and shocked uh, and then worried about what comes next. Not worried for me so much, but worried about how Daniel might uh, cope with the news and uh, what sort of treatment there'd be on the way. Would there be enough um, pain relief and uh, just how long is it going to be? all sorts of concerns that you, you have when there's a kind of an unknown but definite event coming up. And there doesn't seem to be uh, any evidence of a definite cure for it. Um, so Daniel's trying very hard to find some solutions to this uh, and we will help him all the way to do that. But uh, as far as what we can do now, I, I don't know what the future holds. Treatment is very difficult because in Daniel's case, there really are not enough people uh, to be able to carry out tests. And I understand their dilemma, um, although it's awful for families like us that have to go through this, they've got so many people with cancer in so many different uh, areas of their body that they are gonna concentrate on those that they can cure the most, which is very hard for those like us who uh, have a son with an unusual cancer. Um, but I've inquired about clinical trials and they said there really is nobody to do clinical trials against because if you've only got one person or two people in the world that are alive with this particular cancer, they can't do clinical trials. There's not enough people to make it uh, possible. So it's just a very difficult situation for everybody to be in. The realisation that day to day we've got to live with this and, and deal with it. If I said I haven't got any regrets, I'd, I'd be lying. I don't know anyone who finds himself in this kind of situation who doesn't have regrets. But what I've found is that wallowing in those and thinking, oh, I wish and if only, uh, doesn't fix them. They're still there. So the best thing to do, I've found, is to say, that was yesterday. That was moments ago. That's gone. But what can I do today and tomorrow to make sure that I haven't got the regrets? And sometimes there are things that you just can't fix. I've found that. Um, things I'd love to be able to go back in time and change in Daniel's life and in mine as well but the truth is I can't do that so I have to park those I have to step away from those and look to what's good today what's worthwhile what's going to make Dan happy and me happy and the rest of the family happy and that's not a selfish thing that's all about having a quality of life that's that's worthwhile so the best advice I've been given is actually, you know, put those things behind you and enjoy what you've got now. I think we've tried the best we can under the circumstances. Um, Daniel's lived his life, we've lived ours, and uh, you can't change things. It's no good looking back and saying, what if, what if? A lot of people do that and have a sense of guilt. Um, I don't think I would necessarily change anything. Uh, I'd like it to be different in the fact that Dan doesn't have cancer, but um, we just have to try our best to uh, work with what we have now and uh, just make the best possible opportunities while we have them. It hurts me that Daniel is ill and that it's terminal because um, it's just gutting to see a, a young life um, that isn't going to continue. And it, it is good, though, to see that Daniel is using this experience to try and inform other people, um, to help them to cope with the same difficulties, and their families or carers or supporters or whoever it is. Uh, but, yes, of course it hurts. Um, you would have to be completely inhuman not to be hurt. And uh, all the things that you invest in your kids as a parent or uh, you know a, um, a supporter or whatever um, you just have to deal with the fact that they may not happen and that hurts so yeah it's a painful experience when daniel was a child he was very easygoing and uh, placid and he'd play a lot with things and um, quite a content child. Daniel as a kid was a really uh, happy child. He was um, lots of fun, very adventurous, loved his uh, art, um, was always into dance and music and all those kind of things. Liked, uh, liked rap I seem to remember pretty early on um, and got into all that kind of stuff. He was um, 
just outgoing and lovely to be around and lots of people um, have recognized him through his vlog and so on and, and said we remember him as this this happy guy that used to uh, play with our kids uh, and be around daniel has changed since the cancer um, he's got so much to process i don't know how he manages to do it but he does get uh, a bit more angry and um, unhappy miserable um he is angry but then wouldn't anybody be uh, at his age as to what he's going through he's frustrated as we are um, but uh, I don't think it's changed him as a person it's just made him want to find solutions there are times when some of the issues are overwhelming for all of us and I know he finds that difficult to deal with and he's got no other outlet I think the hardest thing to see him go through is the frustrations of not knowing there's a solution of trying different things and seeing if it's going to work um, to go through the operations and they are really evasive procedures and come out at the end of it and it hasn't worked I think that's been the hardest thing uh, for all of us to cope with because there's a certain amount of hope that you place on would the, will this work or will that work and uh, I think you hope and pray that it will be a solution so I think the amount of surgery he's gone through uh, to find that there's that it hasn't really worked has been difficult. Um, I, I'm hoping there will be something that will uh, prolong his life longer, um, but we should wait and see. The hardest thing to see Dan go through is all the anxiety and the pain and the operations and the, the suffering actually that goes with having cancer. Um, and also the difficulty of not knowing what treatments are there, what might work and what won't. There are so many unknowns, it's really hard to go through that with him. The cancer growth is rapid. Um, we've seen that in action uh, when delays have happened and there's been more growth within that time. Um, it's an aggressive cancer, so I think we know uh, what this means um, to Daniel with regard to the tumours in his body and what it means to try and get rid of this cancer. Um, it grows uh, very rapidly um, and spreads uh, equally um, quickly, uh, certainly after surgery. It hurts me to see Daniel go through this. Um, there's nothing I can do to make him better. Um, it hurts that he won't see perhaps the things that we take for granted, even the trees in the fields or the uh, um, the seaside or his nephew growing up and, and things like that, that upsets me uh, because I would want uh, Daniel to have a full life, to get married, have children and uh, enjoy a long life and according to what we know that possibly isn't going to be the case uh, so that's hurtful and, and as people have said before it's the wrong way round you expect parents to go before children, not children to go before parents and um, it's just difficult to uh, sometimes um, come to terms with that. It's the unsayable thing, isn't it? You don't really want to sit down with someone you really love and say, you know what, there's only one way this is going to end. I mean, we all know that um, life is terminal. We all go at some time, but to see someone young and suffering and obviously getting sicker, um, and then know that the time is becoming shorter and that one day they won't be there to, to do what we're doing now, talk through a camera or um, just have a chat and a laugh. That's, that's really difficult and uh, I've had lots of tears over that. I know the rest of the family have um, filling up now. But the fact is, the sooner we manage to face that horrible truth, the easier it is to make Daniel's life easier to bear while he's going through this and the more understanding we've got and the more we can plan and cope with it and that's not a selfish thing because we want Daniel to be as well as he possibly can but also we need to survive him well because that's what he would want for us uh, and that's what he's told us he wants so someone told me a long time ago and it's so true the best thing you can do when someone 
leaves this life is to live well and to survive well. And if there's any advice or anything that I've learned through this situation, that's, that's the answer for me. What's the best way to survive well? For everybody that's going through a similar thing to us, uh, don't do it on your own. Uh, get the support you need around you. Um, make sure that you have people that you can uh, talk to. Um, not necessarily that they'll blab off to everybody else, but people that you can talk to about how you feel outside the family. I think it's very difficult within a family to talk about the things that are uh, distressing you because perhaps you don't want to upset anybody else. But find an outlet, uh, talk to somebody and uh, just express your feelings. Uh, I think it makes us all uh, better people for doing that. And then you can cope better with the day-to-day -day things that you have to deal with. The advice I give to any person going through this situation as a parent, uh, particularly as a father, is do not get isolated. Lots of people don't want to talk to you because they don't know what to say. The best thing you can do is actually engage with them in a normal conversation and not feel guilty about it. And also let people know how you feel about the situation, explain it to them and say, you know what, I'm really sad about this, but, you know, let's, let's talk about something else uh, because I don't want them to be sad as well um, and I don't want them to, to worry about me. The other thing I've found so helpful is I've got lots of good friends and um, they've been so supportive and have sent me all sorts of encouraging messages and helped, offers of help, all kinds of things. Um, and also use the, the people out there who are the experts in supporting people going through cancer. I mean, we've had a lot to do with Macmillan and they've really helped me to face all the unfaceable things that you have to deal with when you've got someone with a terminal illness. They've been brilliant. So, um, you know, my advice really clearly is don't get isolated and talk to the people who understand where you're at. And you'll find that as you do that, you can explain that to others and they will respond really well. Uh, I'm just sharing from what has happened with my friends and, uh, and family around us. We often ask ourselves, and I ask myself, how long do I think Dan's got left? And, you know, that's a really tough question to face because you kind of feel like you're pronouncing a sentence on someone. But the truth is, we don't think he's got a huge amount of time left. We feel that um, what the doctors are telling us and the way the cancer is progressing means that we probably are looking at months rather than years. But we pray for years and we hope that he will um, be strong enough to fight and fight on as long as he can. Balancing that though with um, watching him suffer and seeing him get sicker, which, you know, look at his outward appearance, he looks ever so well but actually he's really not and inside things are changing and his ability to do things are changing um, and in balance uh, we have to say you know time is probably short. How long I think Daniel's got left I hope more than we think. Um, I hope that uh, he gets to his next birthday and Christmas um, so that we can enjoy that together and as they say, always look on the bright side of life. Doo -dum. Doo -dum, doo -dum, doo -dum.